This magic machine was designed by an incredible engineer by the name of Nathaniel G. Harishaw of not just steam engine fame, but sailboat fame. This man was essentially designing the maritime equivalent of spacecraft in the 1890s. He was a master of hydrodynamics, he was a master of high performance engines, and he was a master of making everything as light in weight as possible. To that end, everything on this is thin wall. This may look like a huge heavy engine, but it isn't. Almost everything in here is empty space. And these pipes are all thin wall and fragile. So handle with care. That's why these engines don't typically do well in museums. Nathaniel Harrishoff and George Eli Whitney were colleagues. They both approach things in the same way, and in fact, you'll see on Whitney's engine, his crossheads are designed in the same way that these valve pivots are. Valve rod pivots, they're high surface area, they're low weight, they're actually hollow. You can go right through the pins, but they are high surface area because George Whitney and Parashoff and everyone else back then who knew anything, knew that the wrist pins are very high wear items and on a lot of engines they were very small. So they increased the bearing area to stop that from wearing out. The valve gear is one of my favorite things. I love it, but I hate it because this valve gear affords no cutoff because it does not reduce valve travel, it only changes phase. So this is how that works. I don't know if you can see it because of the steam cloud. What it does, I'll stop the engine briefly so you can see it. It changes the relationship of the position of the eccentrics to the position of the cranks. You see the crank is stationary right now, but we're flipping the eccentric, we're flipping it from about 260 degrees to 80 degrees. Or, yeah, 280 to 80 actually. But you can't change the cutoff. You can't advance the lead angle, right? So you can add lead to it, but you won't change the travel of the valve. So it doesn't do much good for cutting off, and that's why there's only three positions. But it's very simple. It's very elegant. And you can see, as another thing I love about Harishoff's engine, he was such a brilliant designer, and he got, he got the reciprocating masses right down. You see the main rods? The main rods here, I'll present the HP to you. The main rods are hollow, they're box type. So it's two very thin ones connecting to the big bearing and the small end bearing down up there. And it's, they're, they're very light, the pistons are very light, the pistons are very thin and they're conical. And so this engine, as you can see, runs like it has a flywheel, even with no flywheel on it, and it's a triple. Usually most triple expansion engines or compounds, as you saw, are very rough running, even if you get the timing right. And there's another thing about this engine that you need to see, craftsmanship-wise. I need to tighten up all of this. Any of the engines I would buy and work on here would be this one. This here, this beautiful valve shaft is one piece, and he made it, you know, except for these thrust collars. Look at how they made it. Look at this end plate. You see all the different centers? When you put this on a lathe between centers, you have to put it in every single one of these to turn that pin, that pin, that pin, and things on the phase variator. So he afforded you a lot of things to work with on this. And look at how easy it starts. The other thing about this engine, take, take a look at the cylinder bores. So with a large IP, and an immense low pressure. This engine was meant to exhaust, of course, into a condenser, as almost all triples are, but he proportioned this to run with a very high vacuum and a very high steam pressure, which is why all of the valves are piston valves. And when you put this in a clipper hull or in a torpedo tumble home hull, this thing could drive you along at 20 knots.
why I love Parashock engines. One of the few things that I'm actually that obsessed over. And you can see, well, I let the engine speak for itself in this case.